welcome back. I'd like to talk to you about subscription PVRs. Now, Sky Plus has dominated the subscription PVR market since it first appeared on the scene ten years ago. Quite simply, it's been better than anything else available. However, with the launch of this, Virgin Media's new TiVo box, could Sky finally have been bettered? It was time for some testing. For the last few months, I've had both the TiVo and the latest Sky Plus HD boxes at home. I've been thoroughly testing them to see for myself if Sky has finally been knocked off the top spot. First things first, remotes. Now, the Sky Remote is an excellent piece of product design. All the controls are subtly different in their shape. You can operate them by touch, and it helps that uh, they're all a thumb stretch, the ones you use most frequently from where your thumb naturally is when you're holding it. Added to which, uh, we've all become rather familiar with Sky Remotes over the years. I wasn't quite as convinced by the TiVo Remote, though. Now, the TiVo remote is all new, so you'd expect it to take a bit of time to get used to. Um, but uh, it's all rather frustrating because it's not actually very well designed, I don't think. It's got a lot of very similarly shaped buttons, and some of them aren't in the place you really want them to be, like this clear button right down at the bottom, which I found I was having to use quite a bit. Other things I've been living with over the past few months are the interfaces and the EPGs. Both the platforms obviously come with very comprehensive electronic program guides. You can look what's coming up on the, all the various channels up, up to about a week in advance. Um, the Virgin Box goes a bit further, though, because if you select a program, you can actually find all the episodes of it that are coming up. So, TiVo offered more information, but I found it somewhat slower than Sky when scrolling through the pages. An observation my daughter agreed with. I think it's really slow, to be honest. You don't have the simple kind of way of using it instead of, like, on Sky. It's kind of quick and easy to use, well, for my age, really. Sky also had the edge in terms of usability and intuition, but then its interface has been tried and tested over a number of years, while TiVo's is still ironing out a few kinks. There are lots of minor little frustrations with the Virgin interface. I mean, just one tiny example. If you go to the Apps and Games tab on the Home menu, you get another menu which just has Apps and Games in it, so you have to press it twice. Why? <laughs> but how do the boxes compare when recording? Sky can record two channels at once while you watch a third programme you've already recorded, whereas with TiVo, you can actually record three programmes at any one time while watching a fourth pre-recorded one, something which did meet with teenage approval. Um, I find that the TiVo box seems to be working a lot better when it comes to recording. You can watch... you can record several things, and you get to seem to watch another program at the same time, which is good compared to when you watch a Skybox. You can only record two things at a time, and if you try and watch another program, your recordings will fail. So, TiVo had the edge there, but it also had another neat feature up its sleeve. So, normally on the uh, TV box, as with the Skybox, uh, you just set your recordings or series recordings from the TV guide. But the TiVo also goes one further because it actually records things automatically that you might like. You help TiVo refine its choices by using the thumbs up and thumbs down buttons on the remote to show your approval or disapproval. Now, that's clever. In fact, recording capabilities are arguably TiVo's trump card because you can also set it to record by keyword or an actor's name, meaning you don't need to scour the schedules. Now, say, for example, I wanted to uh, get all the films with Sid James in them. He's a long-term favourite of mine. There we are, look! I mean, it could be a way of discovering programmes you wouldn't have done otherwise, which is pretty rather nice. So, all very clever, and it did leave the skybox, frankly, looking rather limited. And it wasn't done there, because compared to Virgin's on-demand content, Sky also seems to trail a bit. Now, it's the middle of the night, I can't sleep. This is just where the Virgin box really comes into its own, because there's a vast amount of on-demand material. There's recent programmes from BBC, ITV, Channel 5, Channel 4. Plus, there's an additional whole library of movies, music videos, TV choice on demand. On this page, for example, I can choose from Johnny Vegas and Jack D to Jane Eyre. Hmm. Tough life watching TV all day. 
This is all great. I must confess, though, that I've experienced a few frustrations with the on-demand content, the iPlayer app in particular freezing occasionally. Overall, though, Virgin really sets the standard with on-demand. While Sky has a service called Anytime Plus, which offers similar options, to access it, you have to be a Sky broadband subscriber. Virgin, by contrast, don't make any such stipulations. So, after my months of testing, what conclusions could I draw? The actual boxes may have changed, but it's still the same old choice between Sky and Virgin, really. With Sky, you've got a massively slick box, lots of channel choice, whereas with Virgin, you've got more technological features and more on-demand content, but wrapped up in a rather clunky interface that can be irritatingly temperamental at times. All in all, too close to call. What are your G ratings? Well, I'm going to give four Gs to the TiVo because you do get that wealth of on-demand material, all those clever features, and even during the months that I've had it, they've started to iron out those bugs. OK. But I'm also going to give four Gs <laughs> to the Sky Plus HD box simply because it is so slick and easy to use. It is the one you tend to be drawn to. Yes, it mm. is. OK, John, thank you very much.